they've made a system in such a way that you find all these designers and all, all these people in a fashion house and there is a system they are following so if you want something like any clothes you need to go to the boutique to buy so they have a system they have a way that they are producing right and when these systems are put in place all these people will benefit we can employ a lot of people there will be unnecessary competition which is not yielding any results upon all these people we are seeing on on, on the roadside and we are still importing these huge number of clothes into the country and costing ghana that amount well it's now 25 minutes past two gamel clothing is a very young man who uh, says he always wants to solve problems so whilst in school uh, he gave his clothing, uh, his clothes actually, to somebody to sew for him for his graduation. That, that, that was a dinner. A dinner, okay. Not a graduation, for a dinner. Uh, and the person delayed, uh, you know, in making the clothes available. And even when it was available, it, is, it was not as expected. It was not to the expectation, you know, of him. And so he decided to start his own clothes line. And that's how it all began. He says he didn't start with any capital. Um, only along the line, somebody gave him 500 Ghana cities, and the yeah. person didn't take it back. But basically, he started with nothing, and by grace, he's come this far. Now, the youth of today are, are being encouraged to go into entrepreneurship, and he's a young man, and um, he's sharing his own experiences with us. Now, he's talked about the fact that some of the challenges they face, or he's facing, or has faced, has to do with people who, you know, graduate from school but cannot do much. And even though they can't do much, again, um, they, they, they would want to make much more money than the owner of the business. That's what their focus and attention is on, making money. But let's talk about the good ones you have. How faithful and how true are they? Where I used to shave, there's this man who has his own business elsewhere and so opened this um, barbering shop and asked a young man to man it for him. Now, a couple of months um, after, this young man, one time I went there, told me that, Charlie, then he mentions the area and then he says and he didn't do that to me alone but did that to many of the customers many of the people who go there to shave their hair and their beard so i decided not to follow him there because i started That's with the owner of the business yeah. so i said let me stay there i went there a couple of occasions and the man had closed the barbering shop so I tried to get his number. I got his number. I called him and I said, "Maba, I'm praying. You say, 'Maba, you meet me.' Now, maybe I are near to him. I said, 'They are coming. They are coming. They are coming. They are coming. Hmm. We go meet you, mano. We go meet you, mano. We be on one day. Now, they make customers in Nako. So if he started a business and asked somebody or employed somebody to man the business for him, and this is how the person paid him back, and he's bitter about it. I don't know. How would you say? dedication to to uh, uh employers are uh, i think w with this question i would say that uh i'm I probably I'm, i might blame the owner a bit mm. right mm. if you start a business without a structure mm. the business is bound to fail and i've seen that a lot with people so people they have some money they set up a business and we're like, hey, come manage for me. And they are doing their own thing. As I told you, I, I studied herbal medicine, right? I completed school in Ken USD. I went to Tetakwashi to do my two years. After that, I had to quit and focus on this business. And I got a lot of people asking me, you could combine both. It doesn't work. If you really and truly want to build a business, you need you, to keep an eye on you it. You don't have to combine both. Because I know people who are combining businesses it, and they're doing fine. You know, so there are stages where you get to where you've put in enough structure mm. and systems to check your workers. Mm. At that point, you could stay back a bit. Now, I don't spend much time at the shop at the mall. Mm. But when I started, right, I was there every day. For the past four years, I've been there every day. Mm. Because then I didn't have enough structure. I need to test the system and make sure that it works, right? So if you don't have that kind of systems and structure to make sure that from the start to the finish, there is a way to control your workers. Trust me, they will disappoint you. You can't trust any of your workers that, hey, let me leave everything to you and you come back and it works. Sometimes I know they might be tempted even because you are dealing with money. Mm -hmm. So for things to work, you need to put in structures. And that is how it's going. So there are several ways that you need to you need to look at your business and the models that you use 
and find a way to put in structures that will control so, the so, workers so, at so, any point. So you don't have that kind of a problem where you have a worker who has decided to move on. And I'm still having at the back of my mind that 